here today. I think you'll find that my presentation really connects in a variety of ways with the uh, previous speakers. Uh, Jackie's on the element of reflexivity, I think in the, in the form is very important. Lauren's, I think, on the role of emotion, I would like to uh, come back to at the end. And Carl, the importance, I think, of, of history and the role of, of the young. I'm going to be looking at this from a, a bit of a different uh, perspective, in the sense I'm looking at one of the, the claims about the social forum in terms of its horizontality, its emphasis on open spaces, supposedly inclusive, and I'm going to make an argument that in a variety of ways, um, horizontal, uh, horizontality or horizontalism, they might have it, in open spaces are in a variety of ways, uh, or can be, exclusive. And what I'm going to be sharing with you is some data from the Occupy Research Group, which conducted uh, some surveys in January of, uh, in Jan of December to January, and the data is just starting to roll out uh, at the end of March. So I want to be drawn upon that and drawn upon some other data that I have as well for social forms. So I just want to refer to the uh, beginning on some of the claims of the, of the concepts and val on the concept and values of horizontality. Some refer to it as horizontalism. Others say it's not an ide ideology. So I'm going to use the term horizontality. But I think we've seen the, the, some of the claims. That the common claim that horizontality is a characteristic of the Occupy movement. And that, furthermore, horizontality is a characteristic of new social movements and it's an organizational form and a type of decision making that has certain key values. Participation, direct democracy, ethical say of participants, consensus, speaking and listening, inclusion, a very important value, diversity and heterogeneity, autonomy, discussion, cooperation, looking across horizontally uh, to one another and not looking upwards. So it's both a cultural idea and a, a goal. And refining it a bit more, just continuing, it's often claimed that horizontality is a prefigurative, pre, is prefigurative, that is, in the sense that um, we're supposed to be modeling the type, future type of society that we want to, to live in. So that decision-making methods within uh, horizontality are key building blocks for alternative types of social and political organization. So they're representing a, a, a new vision of society, this type of society you'd want to live in. So if that's the case, then inclusion has to be a key value. So I'll be going on to some, some, some data that goes into uh, so some of the results in terms of the demographics. Now, this is a representation here from uh, Occupy Wall Street. Just take a look at it, scan this, uh, put, them, put it in your, in your memory of who's there and who's present at this particular uh, session. And we have the, and Jackie's referred to, others have referred to it, historical examples of horizontality. The 70s, we have the new social movements uh, breaking off in terms of uh, their de-emphasis of uh, verticality of the older, uh, it's often uh, union movements, it's often uh, and labor pointed to as an example of uh, verticality and, and centralized uh, <coughs> social movements. But these are supposed to be new, more, more cooperative. Jackie mentioned the Zapatistas. We have uh, Seattle and the uh, uh, Battle of Seattle at the World Trade Organization in December of 1999. We have the post-2001 Argentinian collapse, which is supposed to be a very profound example of horizontality and building into or leading on to the global justice movement and the general uh, anti-neoliberalization global process, globalization protests that often took place at various summits such as the WTO where, uh, where these organizations, international uh, organizations were meeting, the World Social Forum we've mentioned, and the regional and local so social forums including the United States Social Forum in 2007 and 2010. So it's often acknowledged or held that the World Social Forum is, puts an emphasis on the values of horizontality. And here's a, 
a quote from the charter of the charter of principles of the World Social Forum that it's an open meeting place, that's an open space. But I think the, the more noted quote comes from Chico Whitaker, one of the founders of the Social Forum, and it says it's a space that has no leaders. It's only a place, basically a horizontal space. It is like a square without an owner. The World Social Forum is a space created to serve a common objective of all those who converge to the forum, functioning horizontally as a public square without leaders or pyramids of power. The, world, the forum works as a factory of ideas. And one of the points of contention that has risen uh, out of this particular quotation is Whitaker's de-emphasis of the notion of, of power uh, as a core element of um, horizontal, horizontalism. And, and Jackie has really mentioned that we really should be thinking more consciously of it and reinserting it as a, uh, it's, power is a constituent element of our social relations, it never disappears, it's always present. So to claim that we have a space, I think, of any meeting of any people at any time without power relations um, is, I, I just don't think it's, it's, it's accurate in practice. So we want to look at horizontality as a goal versus horizontality as a practice. So it's a goal, it's a guiding vision, but it's not an empirical description. It's not really what happens in, in many cases. Open spaces are never completely flat. Hierarchy is always present. Verticality is always present. It may be there informally, but it's always present. So power relations and exclusion, therefore, can still exist. So I want to just come up. So some of the key contradictions of open spaces, the lack, one of, one of the criticisms of the forums uh, have been in the past, the lack, world social forums, the lack of racial and class diversity, and some criticism of open spaces as inclusive spaces. There's one from, from uh, Janet Conway, Inequalities among movements get reproduced in the open space unless there is affirmative action. So you, you have an open plane, it's just going to create many of the inequalities in society and amongst movements in general. And here's one of the organizers of the social forum, the US social forum, they're trying to get away from that in the US case when they had the first one in 2007. It says if we were to throw open the US social forum, what would you get the first time would be activists, organizations more capital, maybe more intermediaries, rather than base building organizations. And it would probably be more white than not. So openness can, in a sense, lead to a number of contradictions in terms of the basic values that one espouses. So this is in terms of uh, being wary in terms of not thinking critically about open spaces and horizontality. So I want to come back and look at this value, at this picture again, just refreshing for yourself. Who do you see present at this particular uh, General Assembly? So the first question is, the Occupy movement, what does the, the data tell us? Is the Occupy movement global? In fact, the answer is no, it's not global. Uh, this was taken for October 15th, it's taken from data of 950 one Occupy, I think, Facebook sites, and they mapped out uh, 750 of them. It took place in 82 countries. Look where the Occupy movement is centered. It's a, it's a European and North American phenomenon. You do have instances of, we you know, in ha other events happening in Chile and Israel, somewhat analogous, but it's really North American and European. And if you're to look at the United States, we have the two wings of the United States, the two coasts, the heartland, is a wasteland in terms of the Occupy movement. It's a strip in terms of the West Coast, the East Coast, down to New England, to Washington, moving over into um, Illinois and Wisconsin. So it's not totally inclusive of Americans either. It's not, it's not global, it's not totally inclusive of Americans. So I think we have to be wary in terms of making some of these claims. So what I've done, uh, done is drawn upon some data this is the Occupy Research Demographic and Political Participation Survey. You can get this online. 
The data is, uh, is, they have a polished version and a raw version. You can access this and play the, with the data yourself. It's, it's, it's an open source group, and anybody can participate and create. And various studies by the University of California, Riverside, Transnational Social Movements Research Working Group. A very, they have a number of very good studies that could be linked here. People might know Ellen Reese and, and, and Chris Chase Dunn, and I, I relied upon their data here for some comparisons. But starting uh, with some of the data, just, oh, oh, just a very important thing about the data. I think I, well, I want to mention this. The intention of the Occupy Research Group was to have randomized samples conducted at various sites. What happened was, though, by um, December, the police were closing down many of the sites. They were scattering them. So the, um, the majority of Occupy sites were raided and shut down by police. So how do you get the data. So what NAFAC did was send out requests, send out the survey, anybody could fill it out, to 883 Occupy camps, and they sent out other links and email distribution methods. So it's not a scientific, uh, uh, it's non-random, it's not scientific, but it does tell, give us some data, which is better than nothing, and 85% 80, of those who filled it out are from the United States. So it gives you a bit of an idea of who's there at, at, in terms of Occupy, who's participating. Again, have you been to a camp? 63% say they have been to a camp. Now, the type of activities they participated in, most have participated in assembly, uh, most have marched in a pro protest, volunteered to give food, participated in workshops, taken part in a in a working group. Now, what are their age? Now, this is very interesting. Uh, look at the age, uh, it was Carl mentioned that it's led by the young. Look at the 18 to 24 year old cohort, it's 12, it's 12 and a half percent. Look at the, old, the, the other two categories, 25 to 44 and 45 to 64. So I'm gonna give you some comparative data and go back. Let's look at the demographics of the World Social Forum 2005, 2007, U.S. Look at 18 to 25, look at how high those figures are. But then if you start looking at 26 to 45 and then 46 to 55, uh, 46 to 65, notice how they're not that large. But let's go back and look at that data again. The data here is not the real young. It's more in terms of you get a much higher percentage uh, attending who are, who are older, and the, the, the big gap is, is, I mean, the large amount is 24 to 44. So this demographic is somewhat older than the, those who have attended other uh, uh, global justice movements in terms of where we have data. So it's an older demographic, and that leads to some questions of why is it in this particular case? Again, here's the, some of the data for the, the older group. Uh, the middle cohort, 26 to 45. Um, so it's not, it doesn't have the youth that the other movements have had. Here's some of the, in terms of gender, uh, female, uh, 52, 53%, which is a slight overrepresentation. Male, 43, 44%. It's a slight underrepresentation if you're looking at census data. And transgender and uh, declined to state. So, uh, we have an under, slight underrepresentation in terms of, of men. But looking at it, we have in terms of comparisons with gender for 2005, 2007, the World Social Forum, and the U.S. Social Forum, 2007. Men, slightly overrepresented, but look at, look at really interesting for U.S. Social Forum. This is the role of intentionality that uh, uh, Jackie mentioned. 62% are, are women. It's a total, total demo, a different demographic, okay? Just in terms of Occupy uh, race and ethnicity, look at, we have U.S. Census data and who's there. White, the white Caucasian population is overrepresented. Latino representation is markedly down. They're underrepresented. Black Americans are underrepresented. The only thing that I think that is heartening is you have a higher participate, participation rate of indigenous peoples, but for Core groups, they represent 28% of the U.S. population, Latinos and, and black population, and they're, they're greatly uh, underrepresented in terms of the Occupy respondents. Coming back to thinking of it, let's compare here with the World Social Forum 
And really, let's look at the U.S. The US Social Forum 2007. The black uh, population, black Americans, are bang on their statistical representation. The um, indigenous population is bang on their statistical uh, representation, and the Latinos are slightly overrepresented. So you have a different composition, you have a different constituency at the U.S. Social Forum. Then why was this the case? Oh, other data you might want to be interested in. Uh, most have university degrees, uh, at all of them. Uh, they occupy 30% have a graduate or professional degree. Uh, high figures as well for education for the U.S. Social Forum. So in sum, those who are active in the Occupy are much highly, more highly educated than the general population. So they're really a subset of the population. And the same is true for the World Social Forum and the World Social Forum. Other areas of civic engagement, you can see these are people who are much more active, right, much more active than the general population. 91% have signed petitions. Most Americans don't sign petitions. Most do not contact their uh, member, and excuse me, their, their congressman or any other politician. So in sum, this is a different <laughs> cohort than when you find in terms of the population in general. So let's go in terms of uh, conclusions, which I'm coming to. Horizontality is a goal, not a reality. The Occupy movement, at least in its US manifestation, we might talk about elsewhere, and it's important, I think, to, people have other examples to talk about, is not yet fully inclusive in terms of race, ethnicity, and 2007. So what happened at the U US Social Forum? Well, at the beginning, they deliberately set out, in terms of intentionality, to bring into the forum those who had been uh, historically excluded from other forums. And so what you had is a very different demographic in terms of who, who was there. The white, for example, white uh, population and uh, white participants are only half versus 72 percent of the, of the population. So it's a deliberate attempt to create and do something different. So horizontally, horizontality was sacrificed to a certain extent. So some including remarks. Yet when you attempt to have greater racial, ethnic, and class inclusiveness, you give something up. Something's given up. And you, you, so you have fewer in terms of white Americans, organized labor, mainstream environmentalists. So the question you, what can be asked is, what then is a proper balance between vertical and horizontal forms of participation? And Carl mentioned the point that when they needed those folks down in Zuccotti, who did they call upon? They called upon labor, who had the capacity to organize at a critical moment and to intervene. So what is that proper balance between the two? Um, how can horizontal movements in Occupy become more in inclusive? Perhaps they should de-emphasize de the discursive model of the General Assembly, which really privileges really the chattering classes, okay? The educated classes really occupy that particular space. And Lauren mentioned the importance of emotion, which I think is really critical of that to de-emphasize the rational critical element and to bring back and recognize the centrality of the, the importance of motion, meaning, and identity. Or should inclusiveness be de-emphasized in favor of the values of openness? So the values of openness and horizontality are so important that we should keep them and, and what are the trade-offs and, and why? So that's it, thank you.